another sustainability focused research that I'm going to move us on to is our second article, which is shape shifting fabrics. And it's out of Harvard University. It's research from Professor Kit Parker and his postdoctoral fellow, Luca Serra. What do you and mean by shape shifting? So, what they did is they took wool, like that's in this sweater, okay, um, and they shredded it down to make a new material that they can 3D print. And this material can shape shift, meaning that. Um, when certain stimuli are applied to it, like water or heat, it can actually change the shape of the fabric. Does it? Is, um, is the stimuli always water or heat, or can you like change what the stimuli is? They can program it to be specific to certain stimuli. Okay. So they've talked about water, heat, and then also light and UV. Um, That's pretty. There's cool. a bunch of different stimuli that they can use to get this fabric to change its shape. But I think the easiest way to explain how it works is by relating it to our hair. Okay. Um, most people have hair. I'm fortunate to have a full head of hair. Um, keratin is the protein that makes up your hair. It's also the right. same protein that makes up wool that they're using in this recycled material. Um, and what they call this shape shifting that they apply to the fabric is they call they give it shape memory. And what they do is they basically tell it a shape that they want that fabric to return to when a stimuli is applied. Um, the way I think about it is it's like getting a perm for your hair. Um, we can blow dry our hair, we can wet it, we can comb it, we can style it. But if you want your hair to return to the same permanent hairstyle every time you get a perm where they give it a chemical treatment to kind of force it to go into this state when it's relaxed. So is it the same thing with the fabric? Like I've never had a perm. Um, are, are they like giving the same chemical treatment to the fabric to get you in that state? That like permanent very, state? Very, very similar chemicals. They're using monosodium phosphate, and hydrogen peroxide but the chemicals aren't too important for us to understand but what's really important to understand is they're basically giving this fabric a perm so that when the fat when the fibers relax they return to the desired shape okay that makes sense um, and it's really useful in a lot of applications i'm excited about the fashion ones imagine like the perfect dress shirt for you or i that oh, has that's the a perfect dream creases true. yeah no wrinkles and even if you crumple it up in a ball and sit on it or stuff it in your suitcase, you know, you're cheap. You got a only one carry on on the plane. You're stuffing a bunch of shirts in there. Even if it's all wrinkled, all you'd have to do is spritz it with some water, steam it, or give it some heat. And it returns back to this perfect pristine shape and it doesn't shrink in the dryer. You can wash it. I mean, it sounds like the perfect dress shirt the, to me. The uh, st stuffing of shirts and suitcases gave me uh, massive flashbacks to when we were traveling for conferences and we would stuff our dress shirts and our suits into uh, our backpacks or something. And then yeah, the day fight of, over the iron yeah. the next morning. <laughs> the day of we're fighting over the iron. We could have used something so like that. We definitely could have used these perfect dress shirts on the flip side. Um, there's a lot of women, actually 80% of women are wearing a bra that isn't sized properly. And wow. so what this research team has proposed is that you could use this 3D printing to make a bunch of custom sized bras that have the right shape, that have the right size. And it's actually really, really cost effective to do it in this manner, as opposed to the ways that they do it now. So that could be a great help to folks getting a comfortable bra that actually fits right. Um, they also talk about making a whole new generation of smart garments. So imagine a shirt that's able to open up flaps in your armpit to breathe when you're sweating. Or perhaps when you start to sweat a lot or get really hot, it releases deodorant so you don't smell. Um, things like that, I think, like super smart garments, It's they're kind of using this one research of giving wool shape memory to open the door to creating a whole new level of garments that, um, you know, kind of have a fourth dimension added to them in terms of the shape that they can change or the time or the smell that they release and stuff like that. So these applications sound really, really, really cool, but are, are, are they, did they say anything about what kind of wool they're using? Like, is it recycled wool or is it like just shearing off? So they, Go ahead. Sorry. They're not shearing it off of sheep, which is great. That's like the sustainability focus side of That's this. That's what I was going to ask. Okay. They were able to shred up old wool from a textile factory, I think, but they also mentioned that they could use like, well, that we wear in our clothes. So like this sweater that I'm wearing right now, if it got a huge hole in it, I probably wouldn't want to wear it anymore. But instead of throwing it away, I can be a lot less wasteful and recycle it and turn it into this like perfect dress shirt, super performance material. Um, I think that's super great. Yeah. To, to me, like the applications are wonderful, but the fact that they, they can just recycle like old clothes or just fabrics that people don't need anymore that's the biggest win to me right like if i remember correctly the fashion industry is one of the biggest pollutants uh, in the whole world and if there's a way to like upcycle materials to make something else that's also useful whether it be like more clothes or just going into the medical realm that is wonderful such a huge win in my opinion yeah i agree